Section 8 housing or Burr? Which one's going to get you rich? Give you that financial independence, that freedom you want in life. It's not about getting rich. It's about freedom. That was my motivation to do what I want with my day. And that's what gets me out of bed every morning. I'm striving for that to answer to one person only, me. So back in 2008, during the housing crisis, my mentor said, you need to put your foot on the gas and get some more Section 8 housing. This gentleman was investing in Section 8 prior to 2008. He has over 57,000 a month income coming in off Section 8 alone. All positive cash, no mortgages. We had one and being the analytical driver sprinkled with a little amiable. I said, well, I need to research this more. Well, thank God I did. We do have more Section 8 houses now. But I wish I would have put my foot on the gas a lot earlier like him. Live and learn. It's definitely something you want part of your portfolio. If it makes you nervous, you got to do your research and start slow. Um, I think the current political climate, things have changed. And you're going to want to look at affordable housing. Now, it's not sexy. It's not like, what did I say, Burr? What's Burr? Buy, rehab, rent refinance, repeat. Do that over and over. I talked to a client in Florida and he said, uh, what are you doing right now? I said, well, you first. Well, I bought a property for 1.8. I'm going to rehab and try to sell for 3.4. What are you doing, Tim? Well, um, I'm looking at a property in Philadelphia for 37,000. I got to put about eight in it. I'm going to try to make 900 a month. Tim, I'll talk to you later. Seriously, that's a little extreme, but it's not sexy. People want to do those high flyer burrs and fix and flips. We were always doing the depressed areas of fix and flips. I never was a high roller like that, rehabbing a property in Malibu. Uh, we've done some higher end ones in Florida, but I don't like to stretch myself. I'm, I don't want to be too hot and I don't want to be too cold. I want to be warm. I'm fine with that. I don't want to be the best. I don't want to be in the paper. I just want to be warm. I think that's what you strive for. If you get lucky on now and then, you get hot, but I never want to get too cold. You want to be warm. So what are the positives and negatives? We're going to talk about 10 positives, pros, six cons. So let's get into it. Section 8 housing. Section 8 Housing Act of 1937. That's when all this came into play. The voucher program came a lot later. And HUD department handles Section 8 Housing Urban Development. And they get you qualified if you're looking for Section 8 housing. What do I love about affordable housing? Number one, it's stable. You're going to get that rent check every month on the same day. So you have a $150,000 HUD house. The government's giving you, let's say, $920 a month. The tenant's responsible for the rest. You're going to get that $920 every month. So if the tenant doesn't pay, you can count on that $920 to cover your mortgage. Or if you're lucky... It's paid for in cash. That 920 is all yours. And it's nice to know at the beginning of the month, you know what? On that unit, I'm going to get my check. Some other ones, well, they pay, but they might have a problem. Let's say they lose their job, whatever. They might have a rough month. I have a few of those. But you know, with the government, you're getting that guaranteed money on the same day every month. And they usually do a one to two year lease, half mine or a two year and after that, it goes month to month. So number one, it's stable, stable. Number two, there's a high demand for Section 8 housing, especially in the urban areas, you know, and the demand is only going to increase in the future. So you just, it, it, like I said, I think the main drawback when I talk to people it is it's just not sexy and they don't understand it enough and you're, you're having a slum and you do want to look for absolute garbage total garbage that needs to be rehabbed. And a lot of people don't want to stretch themselves that much. So you got to get your dirty. Like I always say, I roll around in the dirt by day, but I play up in the clouds at night. I got no problem rolling around in the dirt. That's what I love. All right, number three, tenant has incentive to maintain the unit because if they don't, they're going to lose their voucher. So that's nice. A lot, like I said, I say, well, hey, they might trash my unit and I don't have a deposit. But we'll get to that. You can get a deposit. But they have an incentive to, to uh, maintain the unit. And you, Housing and Urban Development is going to make that known to them. And you need to clarify that before you give them the keys that, hey, if 
you don't maintain this unit, you're going to lose your voucher. So that's a huge plus. They have incentive to maintain the unit compared to my units that I'm running my own without government assistance. You know, if they trash the unit, like I said, one time it went above the deposit and then you got to go to court and garnish wages and spend money on attorneys. And it's just a big headache. And I've only had to do that once in 10 plus years. So they have incentive to maintain your unit. Number four, you get pre-screened applicants. That's beautiful. However, however, you want to do your own vetting and you want to screen the applicants too, but it's nice to get some pre-screened applicants. You're going to check their credit, do a background. I do. And you get a double check on that particular person. So you get pre-screened applicants. That's a plus. Uh, you know, you increase visibility of your properties on government websites and your brand, you know, you know, you're going to market your property on their website. So it's going to give you visibility. And as you grow your portfolio of section eight, you're going to get more people calling you. And if you buy and invest in real estate and sell real estate, you might get some clients out of it too. So it's a win win. Number six, you get very low 30 year money right now. You know, Considering inflation is coming, and I wrote this down, inflation debt will not increase. Your rent will increase and your hard asset will increase. So, you know, things are a little volatile right now in the market, printing a lot of money, but inflation is coming. And when you have these properties on the lower end, that hard asset's gonna go up in value, that rent's gonna increase. We're gonna have to build, as I said in another video, more apartments for rentals. We don't have enough right now in the country and that market's going to go up and rents are going to continue to go up. Absolutely. 100%. Um, so you get that 30 year money at low interest rate. You can't go wrong. Um, number seven, you know, like I said, you take stuff that's complete garbage and you know, you turn it into quality units. What's the end result of that? The tenant will never leave. The tenant will never never leave. The, the, worse, the worse the property is you're looking at, and you gotta see the forest through the trees on this, the more money you're gonna make, the better deal you're gonna get. I want the worst of the worst. And that's what you wanna look for. And complete garbage. I mean, just garbage. And that's, the, that's when you're gonna get a deal. Um, numbers eight, as I said earlier, it's a very safe investment and you can increase your rents every year. Right now with COVID on a few, even though I could increase rents, I haven't increased any rents. And we have property outside of California mostly, uh, but the ones in California due to the moratorium, when that ends, I'm not gonna increase rent on the ones in California because we have great tenants and they pay every month during COVID. And so it's case by case. But, you know, it's a very safe investment and it's going to increase every year. Um, number nine, Democrats are going to be expanding the program 100%. This goes back to the Obama administration with HUD. And then it was put on hold with Ben Carson and the, and the uh, Trump administration. Uh, Biden has talked about this and they're going to be expanding HUD. And what does that mean? That means low-income housing in suburbs. They're doing it in Orange County. And you know what, everyone's got their opinion of this. One side will say it's gonna increase crime and it's gonna bring down property values. You know, I will say this, you just can't throw money at the problem. That's what we've done in the past. And, and I see both sides of the fence. It has to be strategic. I see some value in the program, but the bottom line is affordable housing is gonna increase across the United States. And, uh, there's gonna be opportunity there as landlords and investors to make money. So the new administration coming in, I think is gonna focus on HUD and uh, expand the program. Number 10, uh, owning affordable housing today, with section eight tenants means that you have income and you're set up for inflation. Absolutely. I mean, you get, you get three to four units to start. That's a healthy income every month. And you don't have to go, you know, crazy and spend $200,000 on a property, $100,000 on a property. Look outside California. Look in some depressed areas in California. Um, you can start real slow and safe. 
and, and get one, get one under your belt, but you get four, you're humming, you're starting to hum. And then it's gonna be easier for you if you're strapped with cash to get loans, if you're not paying cash for these property. I mean, the best way to do it is have a private investor. That's where I'm fortunate. Have a private investor that's gonna front, front you the money uh, and you don't have to deal with the, the bank. But you get three or four under your belt, it's gonna be easier to get loans. So those are the 10 positives. Let's talk about the negatives. Cons, number one, government bureaucracy. You're dealing with the government. That goes back to having the freedom to do what I want with my job. I, I, I like to screen my tenants. I love that process and, and get a feel and go through the whole process. And some of the units I, I help with the rehab and you know the painting when a new tenant moves in, um, I'm doing that kind of stuff. So you gotta deal with government bureaucracy and fill out the information. You know, when you set up a new tenant, this goes to number two now, there's gonna be delay of 60 days uh, before you get your first payment from the government. And then when you rent it out to a new one, there's gonna be that delay. So be prepared for that. You're not gonna get your money right away when you move a new tenant in to a Section 8 house. It takes a little while to get into the system. And I've seen it longer than 60 days. So you're not gonna get your money right away. So number one, government bureaucracy. Number two, uh, delay on your money when you set up a new tenant in a Section 8 home. Number three, property, property inspections are required by HUD for Section 8 tenants uh, every year. I'm okay with that. I do property inspections on my property, some every six months to a year. And you wanna get in there and see what's going on, how the tenant's taking care of it. So some people do see that as a con, but property inspections are required by HUD. I'm all for it. I let my tenant know, make sure you maintain this unit because you might lose your stipend. And they're really on their game overall in my experience. So property inspections are required. Um, number four, uh, don't get compensated if damage is done to the unit. But I don't get compensated if I have my own units not going through HUD. So I don't see that as a problem. Yes, you have the safety of a deposit, but you can ask for a deposit and I get deposits at 90% from tenants on the side. HUD doesn't you know, take care of that. That's your responsibility. So on the side, you can request to deposit to, give you, to ease your heartburn on that deal. So I get deposits on the side and we haven't had any major damage to units. But some people, that gives them a little heartburn that they, you know, HUD's not providing a deposit on top of that. Uh, but that's your responsibility. And, I, and when you explain to them, and HUD's gonna explain that you have to maintain the unit or you're gonna lose your, your voucher, people are on top of their game. And then on top of that, get a deposit on the side. Whether it's 200 or 1,000 based on what the rent is, I always get something pretty much all the time. Um, number five, eviction is more complicated with Section 8. Uh, it's a little more complicated. Um, I haven't had a problem with it yet. If you know what you're doing, it's not that big of a heartburn, but it's a little more complicated <laughs> than managing units on your own. Number six, I think this is it right here. It's just not as sexy as Burr, and it turns a lot of people off. And for me, I have no problem getting my hands dirty. And like I said, where we're going in the future here with, uh, with this country, and inflation, the amount of money we're printing, and uh, what we're trying to do in urban areas and with COVID, I think affordable housing is gonna be a big player in the marketplace, 100%. And that's where I'm focusing for the future, uh, for investments. Uh, we're still outlining a game plan, on what percentage of our portfolio we wanna put in affordable housing, but it's gonna be a big, big number. And uh, I just want to provide that information today, short and sweet. Burr versus Section 8. Don't be afraid of it. It's not all about the hot sexiness of it. It's about cash flow every month into your bank account. It doesn't matter how you're doing it, okay? It doesn't matter. It's just when you show someone that number. Well, yeah, I'm doing it this way, but this is my number and I got no vacancies. What are you doing? Oh, you had a great month for two months? Ooh, no, you didn't have any rents for three months. So, and you learn so much in the process too. You learn so much in the process. Uh, I've learned so much and I, I'm continuing to learn 
about all with the government and rehabbing. There's always something to learn. And I love that about this, this aspect of uh, investing. So don't be afraid of it. Research it. Do your homework and get on it. Take care.